Today we're making five projects from Dollar Tree signs. Keep watching. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome. The first will be a pumpkin sign. I have got two of these repair markers, furniture repair markers and walnut. This beautiful vintage looking, rustic looking sign from Dollar Tree. This is a piece that I thrifted a good while back and have used it in other projects. It's got some pencil marks on it, so I'm just going to go ahead and freshen it up with a little bit of this black chalk paint. It's going to make that color a little bit deeper and make it look shiny and new. Of course, we want to start by taking our tags off. We're going to disassemble it. We're going to take the ribbon pieces off. Pull those out, they're just attached by staples. And you can save all of those pieces. I'm going to remove all of my staples with just a little um, pliers here. Okay, so if you've seen me use signs before from Dollar Tree, you know this is what I like to do. I'm gonna go over it with any dark color. Could use black here too, but I like the walnut for this, keeping it rustic. And I'm going to go over this with this to give it a finished look. It's going to look better than it would if it was left just that cardboard kind of color. It's just going to give it a little more depth around the edges. I'm going to take that same marker and go over where they already have a little bit of shading. I'm just going to darken it up a little bit. And any other place that I think I would like to have some shading, I'm going to do that as well. I'm also going to go around my eyes and the stem. I just want to remind y'all while I'm doing this that you matter to me. Your opinions matter to me. And the recent community post that I put out about my beliefs and the way I do things, I just want to say thank you. I have had a tremendous outpouring of support and understanding and I really do appreciate that you know to each his own and um, I, and I just want to add here also that I am not upset by what was left for me in that email I, that did not upset me when she talked to me and questioned me it really was sincere there was no ugliness in it um, it's just the fact that it had to be questioned you know so anyway that is done and i'm just saying thank you for that okay now i'm gonna grab that the bottom of the sign was this was the next little section and i'll go over it and do some shading on this one as well i went all the way around the edges and now i'm gonna go over you see where the little striped areas are that's like where the shading is and i'm just gonna kind of go over and areas here and there to make it look you know a little more blended this is a very easy sign for our first project, and I know this is something that you all can do. If you don't have a board like this to use, you can just do a, a rectangle board. You can put two of those long, narrow signs together and use popsicle sticks and glue on the back and put your sign on there if you would like. I'm going to add just one of those little pieces from the very bottom, and I did save my ribbons because, you know, you can use those again too. And be careful when you take your staples out. You know, all that good stuff. I care about y'all, so I don't want anybody getting hurt from anything that they see on this channel. So I'm just going to use hot glue to attach all this down. And it should hold perfectly. This is not something, nor are any of these other projects, something that I would put outside. These are just inside decor pieces. But, you know, if you're going to use things like this outside, you got to be sure that you treat it right, that you use the right types of adhesives, and that you seal everything. Because these pieces, these signs from Dollar Tree are not wooden. They are like an MDF or a thick, thick cardboard type stuff. And they're often bowed when you get them kind of twisted and not flat. So I'm just using my little insulators down there to hold it in place while it dries so it will dry flat against the board. And look how easy that is. I can just hang it by the little embellishments that are already there in the wood on the sides. Or I can use it to just lean against something. And that makes this project very easy and beginner friendly for our very first one. You can watch my videos on Monday and Thursday at 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. It is free to subscribe. You can join if you would like. 
All right, so the next one is a bat wreath. Using another one of those signs, a foam ring. You can get one from Dollar Tree. I'm going to use black spray paint. Another walnut marker. The pieces from this sign and some little black pieces. Now those black branches over there I got from Timu. Got a good deal on those, so this is not a sponsored video, by the way. I'm going to use my sanding block to go around this one because when it was cut, it has a lot of rough, rough edges. And I want everything to be smooth so that I don't spend any extra time trying to cover those edges up. I want it to look nice and crisp. Now there's a hole, like there are on most of these. I'm just going to cover it with some masking tape or some painter's tape. It doesn't really matter what type of tape you use on the back. And then a little bit of this lightweight spackling that I get from the Dollar Tree. These go a long, long way. I've had this little pot forever. And I bought several of them to begin with because I thought I would be using them more. But I have not had to use anything more than one. Okay, that needs to dry completely before you cover that up. Now, while everything is drying, I am going to go around it with this marker the same way we did the other one. Now, I know a lot of people know how to do this already, but there are always new people that come to the channel, and maybe there are some people here who are new to crafting, so we want to be sure that we show them some love and show them exactly the ropes, you know? Show them all the little things that you already know. Gonna be patient and kind going to go all the way around those edges like that just gives a little extra something to it I'm gonna grab my black paint and I'm gonna go right over where my little section dried on his head it looks like he's got a little toupee I'm just gonna pat that off with a little paper towel and it'll blend in a little better then I'm gonna use a little bit of this spooky spooky cloth from Dollar Tree to put on the wreath and here's the wreath once it is spray painted it doesn't have to be solid no problem Look at that. I got some string stuck in there. Would have left it. It would have just added to it, I guess. I'm going to wrap this around this foam wreath. This is easy to do as well. And I'm just going to use my floral pins to put this together. I'm using floral pins because you sometimes will melt your foam wreath if you use hot glue on it. But you are welcome to use cool temp glue or you could even tie your creepy cloth on there if you want to. And I'm pretty much just going to twist it around. It's not going to be in any particular shape or thickness. It's just, I just, my goal is to get this to reach all the way around back to our beginning point. And then once we're back around to that area, and we're going. You can see I'm just kind of pulling it apart a little bit. Back around. And now I'm going to make sure that everything is pinned on the back side. I'm just pinning that one in and then you can trim off anything extra or you can let it hang down you know whatever your preference is and here is our little wreath form all wrapped up easy now I'm gonna take these little picks and you see my cutters over there because I cut about an inch and a half off of each stem because I didn't need all that length you can see there what I'm doing I'm going to measure these at approximately three inches apart on this wreath. This is a 14 inch wreath form. And yeah, I'm just gonna go down here in like every three inches approximately. I'm gonna push those in at a very, very low angle all the way around. And this is gonna give us the beautiful branchy look that, we're see, that we see at Halloween time, you know, in all kinds of stores. Beautiful, beautiful. If you don't have these picks, you can spray paint something you have that's green and use that instead. Okay, so now we have to attach this bat on here. And we're going to be using some pipe cleaners, hot glue, and just a little tab of paper. These are just little scraps of paper. I save them off of backings for stickers and such. And then I just cut them down into little squares, put them to the side so I can use them to make little band-aids, if you will, on the back to hold things in place. Be sure that that glue is nice and cool, and then we can fold these up so that we can push them or loop them around the wreath form underneath. 
So that's what I'm doing here. I'm just kind of straddling those across the wreath form, not around the branches, but the wreath form itself. And that's gonna give it a lot of stability and she ain't going nowhere. Or maybe it's a he since he's got the little toupee up there. You can still see it. You see his little, his little toupee. We're not judging though. I'm telling you, menopause is taking half my hair. Yeah, I've, I'm, I'm going real, real thin here these days. Okay, so we're moving on. I'm going to use some of this satin ribbon. This is just some that was given to me. Thank you, Miss Linda, very much for the donations of all the ribbons and things that you have given me in the past. I appreciate it so much. Miss Linda is somebody who lives locally, and she's a buddy of mine, and she is also a crafter and a creator, and she paints. Yes, she does. In fact, I'm going to be taking one of her classes very soon. All right, so what we're doing now is going to hang this wreath at an angle, um, and I am going to just put a loop of that ribbon around it to make the hanger and a beautiful little bow to go on top. These you can get at Dollar Tree. I'm going to take one of these and I'm going to paint it black. After it is dry, I'm going to assemble this. I'm looking at how I could possibly do it. I can put it in the middle or I could take both pieces together and wrap it around and glue it on the back and that's what I'm going to do. You can see me flip it over so I can add a little bit of hot glue and have everything attached nice and tight so our wreath doesn't hit the floor. Protect your fingers, everybody. Protect your fingers. I've gotten so used to this that, I mean, knock on wood, I rarely burn myself because I'm, I'm very conscious of where I'm putting my hands. When you craft as much as I do and put out two videos a week, you kind of get used to things. And after three years, I'm kind of getting used to it. But accidents do happen, so just be careful. We don't want to put you out of commission during the crafting seasons, right? And I'll just cut these on an angle, but you can certainly do dovetails if that's what you like. And you can see that when it is hanging, the bat is going to be kind of flying sideways. He's coming in for a landing or coming in for a mosquito or something. All right, the next project will be a skeleton floral. I found this little urn or pot at Goodwill. I'm going to use some baby wipes, some antiquing wax, some black paint, a little bit of metallic gold, inspired by the gold glitter on these flowers. This is our sign from Dollar Tree that we will be using on this project. Some creepy cloth. Some thrifted flowers, beautiful, beautiful. I like the red color. It's gonna match what we have going on in the sign. And then these are from Walmart. The tag is gone, but you can see here, it's a Walmart tag. These are gorgeous. I got these, oh, maybe in July or very early August. I'm gonna spray paint this a matte black. And while that is drying, I'm going to disassemble this sign. Fix the hole in the top, just like we did before and then do the coloring and shading all around the edges. You could certainly use black marker or black paint here if you wanted to. But you know I like my rustics. I just decided to go ahead and deepen up the eyes or the orbits here, so I'm using my marker right in here. You don't have to do this if you don't like it. You can leave it exactly like it is, nice and crispy white farmhouse looking with the little paneling on the back if you want to totally up to you depends on what style you're going for and what's going to match your home what's going to bring you joy or what just floats your boat i'm going to do the same thing with the nose and the same thing around the teeth all right that needs to be dry before you go on to the next step i'm going to use a baby wipe and some wax and i've been asked before uh, why i use a baby wipe with it that's just because it's already damp. It already has the perfect amount of dampness and it gives you like a wash of color rather than a really heavy, like if you used a paintbrush, it would be more of a solid color. And I'm not going for that. I want it really to look like an aging process and shadowing more so. So I have better control with the wipe and a wipe is thicker than a paper towel. Um, it doesn't shed like a paper towel does. So you could certainly use paper towels if you don't have wipes. And I really like that this has just deepened it up. It's darkened up that color. It looks more aged. 
and for me especially this year i'm really liking like the um darker cottage core type themes so this works for me i think this this definitely would be something that you would see in a uh, a little spooky house and it's pretty enough in my opinion to be used all year round you know if you're if you're digging the spooky lifestyle all right so now we need to make something to go on the uh to make it a pick so i'm just going to use this wooden dowel and i'm going to use some corrugated cardboard and i can just squeeze it through there you don't have to do this i just thought it was it just became an idea to me and i was like hey i could do that and then i don't have to put an extra piece on the back so i did that added some hot glue i'm going to do the same thing on the bottom part I'm going to add the hot glue. Y'all excuse my shaky voice. I don't know why it's like this this morning, but it is a little on the shaky side. I'm not sick or anything. I probably just need a little more water. Okay, I'm going to go across here to make sure nothing spins around or moves. really want to lock it in place because I'll be shoving it down in the arrangement that we're going to make. And then you'll need to paint that black and let it dry. Here is the floral foam that we're going to be using. Here is that urn. Now, I didn't focus a lot on cleaning the inside. I did give it a good rinse, but no scrubbing because we're not going to see the inside. I'm not going to waste some time. You do you. I'm going to grab that beautiful gold paint, and I'm going to go all around the edge. And then I'll start going around the urn all over. And for me, yes, I'm going heavy here on the edge of it because I just wanted to. You can certainly do it lighter. And then I'm going to feather it out or blend it outward. Now, the harshness you will not see when I am done. For those of you who are doubting right now and going, oh no, what is she doing? Don't, don't worry, don't worry. Just see me out now because I want y'all to understand by watching my process that don't give up on a project in the beginning if you're thinking that you have totally goofed up no just keep working with it keep working with it let the inspiration go just let that creativity flow and just keep building on it you know I'm doing light light with a rough brush a little chippy brush because this is how I like to do it and I found I have the best control over the paint when I'm doing shading and aging techniques when I do it this way and I'm just kind of dipping in and then dipping it off. That's just a, a round that I have there that has plastic on it. And I can wipe it off easily. And it works really well for me to blend out, um, you know, tap off excess color and such. Because you see there, I got it really heavy in one spot. Not an issue. And if it gets to a point where once it is dry, you still think you got too heavy in certain areas, just go back in there with the chippy brush. You can use the same brush, add a little more of that black to it, the um, chalk paint. And just go over that, you know, and then you can kind of buff that down. Once it gets to the point where I feel like I've got enough on there, I'm going to take that same brush without adding any more paint to it. And I am just going to blend, 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 blend. I am going to blend it like you blend the makeup that is on your jawline and in your hairline, right? Right, ladies, if you understand, or gents, if you wear makeup, you understand what I'm saying. Blend, blend, blend. And to me, this just looks so old and it looks like an old tarnished brass pot but you know use your imagination because that's the thing about crafting it might not be truly authentic but you can make it look exactly how you have it in your head if you if you really think about it and you just go with it and for me i just go with it I don't even always know what we're going to use. I start off by telling you some things that I plan to use, and then I add all kinds of extra stuff to it. That's just how my brain works. It's how my spirit flows. All right, so this piece works perfect in the bottom, and then I'm going to add a round disc to the top, and I'll just use the same types of floral pins to hold that in place. But you can use pieces of extra floral branches, whatever you have, to kind of lock yours in place. I'm not going to use hot glue because it won't stick to that other type that's in the bottom of it it won't stick to it it'll just peel off but you see how sturdy that is didn't even have to glue anything now i will take my beautiful thrifted flowers and start adding those in generally i start at the top and add my tallest piece the tallest piece for this arrangement is going to be our sign 
So we'll just say the next step would be one step down. All right, so now you can see here that we're kind of, now you don't have to do it this way. I'm not a trained florist at all, but this is just how I like to do it. And it always turns out pleasing to the eye, to me and then people who see my projects, they, they say that it looks good too and balanced too. So that's kind of what I go for. I'll take some of the beautiful black and red foliage and start adding that in. The bottom where you can see the white foam, I will be later putting that black creepy cloth in there and that's gonna cover the entire thing. So I think that I skipped that when I was filming, but it no worries, it's in there and I think you'll see on the end screen when I show you all the pieces that you can't see into the pot. All you see is the creepy cloth and the flowers. I'm gonna continue going around. I like to turn my project from side to side, look at it from all directions to see if there are any gaps or any areas that don't look like they mesh well with the arrangement. So, you know, I'm not gluing these in. I can pull these out and adjust them if I need to. If you're going to do this to make it something that is long-term, then I encourage you to be sure where you want them before you glue them down, add a little hot glue to the stem, and then you can put them in the foam. These aren't going anywhere in my house though. They're perfect the way they are. So now I'm just going to nestle that little sign straight down in the top. And I think that this piece would be beautiful sitting on your mantle or someplace where, you know, since the back is not um, decorated, that you would not see the back of that sign. So just someplace against the wall, on a shelf, on a cabinet, secretary, etc. The spiderweb sign is the next one. Look at this big whopper of a sign. Can you believe it? That's huge. And that was only $1.25. All these signs were $1.25. I'm going to remove the beautiful ribbon. We're going to use black chalk paint. I am going to upcycle this floral print that was in my little girl's room. And she's outgrown it. Now she's into Ravenclaw, uh, Harry Potter stuff. So this does not fit her aesthetic anymore. I'm going to take my black chalk paint and completely cover all of these flowers. And I am going to also paint the sides of the frame. So all the wood area, the entire thing is going to be painted. Look at Mr. Skeleton. So I was wondering, when you're crafting, do you listen to Halloween music when you're doing Halloween crafting? Do you listen to Christmas music when you're doing Christmas crafting? Or do you listen to like the 80s or the 60s or the 50s or country music? What do you like to listen to to keep you motivated and, and upbeat while you're crafting? I would love to know because it's so different across the board. Now I went over the edges with the black chalk paint because this is a black sign. I filled in the holes on his shoulders where, or his uh, bones there, where the holes were from the hanger. And now I'm just taking a, I think this is either sand or buff, and I'm just going to color over that once it's dry. Here's the sign now that it is black. It is completely dry and he will fit in here. He also fits at an angle if you prefer to do it the diamond way. I found motivation in the sign itself with all the spider webs. So I decided why don't we just go ahead and make some spider webs on the sign that we're going to put him on top of. So this is how you make a spider web if you have never done it. Part of the video was cut off, but I'm gonna show you how to do this in the other corner if you're wondering how we actually start the web. So don't worry, you're going to see it in just a moment. Now you can see when I make these curves, what I'm actually going by is the curve that is right under it. It's gonna be an arch and it goes down on both sides when you get next to the long straight pieces. Just like you would see in a spider web. They don't have to be exactly equal. They don't have to be exactly the same. Spider webs come in a variety of shapes and styles and you are free to make yours any way you see fit. If you wanted to, you could also draw some little spiders on there. I decided to use a silver pen for this rather than using white, but you're welcome to use white. And y'all can just see what I'm doing while I'm talking. And you see that line is not straight too. Not a problem. 
but I'm using silver because if you notice in the morning time when you see a spider web, you can see all the water that's glistening on it or the dew that glistens on it. So I thought this would be a nice way to kind of have that beautiful morning autumn dew look on here. So you're almost throwing a little bit of fall in there. Look at this. Hey, and if y'all have a kid who is a fan of Spider-Man, you could certainly do something like this with a Spider-Man sign if you could find it. Take something you already have at home and use it again. You know, I do that all the time. So I want him to stand up above a little bit. I want him to have some dimension. So I only had four of these building blocks left from Dollar Tree. Ugh, heartbroken. Now I've got to go get some more. I'm not heartbroken about that because y'all know I love going to Dollar Tree. But I'm going to use these to hold him up and give a little bit of shadowing around the edges. At this point, if you wanted to put lights on here, you certainly could. And I'm not going to do it for this because I'm trying to keep these fairly simple for people who just want to do something quickly or who are new to crafting. Plus, this is going to save you a little money when you do it this way. And I think that they look good one way or another. So just make it your own any way that you like it. Just pressing it down so that the glue will grab because like I said a lot of the times you get these signs and they are warped or they are bent but somehow in their process of making them they get bent or maybe when they're packing them in the boxes they're bent so I went ahead and decided after I looked at all angles and directions like I encourage you to always do with your crafting I went ahead and looked at it and decided hey you know what I think I want to add a little more to it so I pulled the edges out so it looked like the spider web was attached to the frame. And I went ahead and added one more outside strand and extended it all the way down to the bottom. Love it. Now these are from uh, maybe Walmart. I don't know, but you can get little plastic bugs anywhere. And I'm just going to take some of these little rubbery type spiders and add them here and there on the webs on his sign. And then I'll also be adding them to the outside of the frame. Now, I didn't have a big black spider, so I took a purple one from Dollar Tree, painted it black, let it dry, put the ring part off of the back, and I will be adding this up here in this corner. So that's, that's Mama Spider, and all of her little babies are having a good time running around in the smaller webs. By the way, I am not scared of spiders. I know a lot of people are, but I think people are generally afraid of the unknown. And if you just educate yourself a little bit about things, um, rather just than just having, you know, a fear that's not rational, you'll see that there's really nothing to be afraid of most of the time. Look at that. How cute. Well, let's just put it this way. I'm not picking up spiders and intentionally trying to play with them or make them mad, but I respect them enough to leave them alone and they leave me alone. Okay, pumpkin sign number two, y'all. This one's gonna be completely different. This one is gonna be a little more rustic Halloween, if you like that. So we're gonna be using some pumpkin chalk paint. We're gonna be using a piece of a different sign. We're gonna use some wood, some ribbon, and this little sign that came from Dollar Tree. And this is actually a fall sign, but I'm gonna make this work for Halloween. Bought this sign last year. You could probably find something like this this year. I'm gonna take my metal leaf off carefully because I will be using it and several more that came off of pumpkins I've gotten in the past. I'm going to give this a good sanding because we're gonna use the brown side. Instead of the white side, we're gonna use the brown side for our sign for this one and you're going to take your tag off obviously your little sticker and then be sure that you go over it well so that you can paint and you won't see any marks from the sticky and then i'm going to wipe it off i'm trimming down the stem because i want to do something a little different for that stem i'll grab my pumpkin chalk paint and i'm going to give this two coats of chalk paint I'm going to take my little side cutters here, my little bull nose cutters, and I'm going to trim down the thickness of this. I am trimming this down based on the piece of wood that I'm choosing to use. These are little pieces of driftwood, I think they're called, 
from Dollar Tree um, that I got this summer. You can use any stem or piece of wood you want to use. And then I'll just use an emery board when I get it trimmed down to smooth it off. I'm just using this as a sanding board, essentially. And it's a little easier to handle um, on little areas than using a big sanding block. I'm gonna use some of my wax here and I'm gonna cover over this piece of wood because although I like the texture in the wood, I do not like um, the light color. I want something deeper for this. So I then took a paper towel and wiped it. You see the paper towel in my hand. And I'm going to put a little hot glue down and then lay that down. Don't put the wax on the back side because wax and sometimes wax and hot glue won't stick together. Okay, so we established that I'm out of my building blocks here, but I'm gonna use popsicle sticks instead. Totally easy to do. It's gonna give me the same look. Look how quick it is. I'm gonna stack them up. I initially pulled out four of the little sticks to use, but I'm only gonna use three. I'm just sandwiching these together. Not exactly in the middle of the sign, but close enough. Okay, now I'm gonna take some ivy green and I am going to color my leaves. Now, you can use Mod Podge on these leaves first so that your paint will stick down, or you could spray some sealer on it so that your paint will work. If you have some chalk paint that you would like to use, you can certainly use that too. You're gonna have to be sure that you're careful with this when you use acrylic paint. Often it won't like to stick to metal, but just be sure that you let it dry thoroughly, thoroughly in between adding any layers onto it or adding any shading or, you know, whatever to it. I like to kind of go with the grain of whatever I'm working with. It just makes more sense to me, so that's what I do, but you can paint this in any direction you want. You can use a, a foam brush, it doesn't matter. Okay, so now I've got my wipe, same thing here. I'm gonna take my wipe, I'm gonna squish my paint down in there. I'm going to have it wrapped around my finger slightly. like this and then I'm going to start shading around this shape to make it look like an actual pumpkin. I did this either last year or the year before with a, um, a cat Halloween sign that I did. Turned out beautiful. Hopefully y'all have seen that one already. If not, check out my playlists and you can definitely find some Halloween goodies over there. I absolutely love doing this on these wood signs. It makes the biggest difference on the way it looks. So you just kind of take a snapshot in your mind of how it looks now, and then the way it is going to look in just a little bit. Now with the wax, it can always be blended out. So if you're alarmed that it is a little heavier on one side than the other, just you know quickly blend it out and you're gonna be absolutely fine. I have found that chalk paint and this antiquing wax work very, very well together. It moves around, it, it moves around great. All right, now you can see that any areas that are a little bit heavy, you could just go back over and kind of buff it out. That's what I'm doing now, I'm just kind of buffing it out. I can darken it up. You know, you can build with this. I love that, I love my antiquing wax. I've got several waxes um, that I got from Plaid, and I like working with all of them, but I especially love this one. Look at the difference already in the pumpkin, y'all. This already looks more like a pumpkin than a cartoon pumpkin, right? The natural places that you would have shadows is just what I'm going by, you know, in case you're wondering. Following the curves and the natural areas that you would have on a pumpkin and I'm kind of basing it off the shape of the cutout itself. Look at the difference, yes. I'm gonna let it dry, and I'll use this piece off of a different sign to put down on here. Isn't that beautiful? I think that looks really nice together. Very rustic and homey. I'll just use some hot glue to place that down. There's enough surface area that doesn't have the wax on it that this will stick down fine. I'm gonna take a little of my dark chocolate paint and I'm just gonna kind of brush this over the green just to give it a little bit of a fall look. I'll let all those dry. 
I've got this beautiful black and white ribbon that I thrifted, but you can find, well, it's actually cream and white. Um, you can find whatever type of ribbon scraps you have sitting around. Go ahead and use that. I thought this looked nice with this. And I've been wanting to use this ribbon, so here we go. This is a very simple bow, y'all. I make this bow all the time. Very, very simple. If you don't like bows, you can leave this part off for certain. I'm going to take a little piece of string here. This is just a little jute. I have a box that's got a little hole in it, and I pull the jute through it. And I'm going to tie it in a double knot, make it nice and tight. And I'll use the tails to, um, to tie around that stem. Dovetail or cut at an angle, whichever way you prefer. Find your position on the stem to see how high you want it. I know that I want to tuck these little tails behind here. And because it's elevated, this makes it very easy to do. I'm going to flip it over and then I'll tie it. Go ahead and paint the back of that if you want to give it as a gift. Or if you're planning on hanging it like on a glass door, like a storm door at your house, paint that so nobody sees it. And then just give that bow a little fluff. I'm going to add a little bit of hot glue underneath where it is tied on just to keep it from sliding up and down the stem because I want it to be in the middle, not down at the bottom. I'm going to use E6000 to glue these leaves onto the pumpkin. You know, if you go to a pumpkin patch, you see the pumpkins, they have all their little vines on them. And although these are maple leaves and not pumpkin leaves, we're just gonna pretend. We're gonna pretend y'all, we're gonna use our imagination. I'm gonna put these here and there, and then I'll use clamps to hold a few in place just as I'm, just to show you that you can do that. You can also seal these before you use them if you want to with a little bit of Mod Podge. See these little clamps from Dollar Tree and the Crafter Square work great for this. While you're doing the rest of your work, it's kind of giving you an extra hand. So just keep in mind that we're putting a little bit of E6000 on it. I'm looking to see, do I want some over here? Nah, we're just gonna make a vine on this side and we'll put them all over here. Whatever direction or angle you like is fine. You can use stickers too if you don't have any of these or you can paint them on. Now I'm just gonna freehand with a very thin brush. This is a bridge brush that I have for stenciling. I'm gonna use this to make some vines for the pumpkin. And it's gonna go between the leaves because our leaves will of course be attached, right? I'm gonna just make little squiggles and little twisty lines, just like vines that you see in nature. And if you do have a little mess up and you get a section that's too thick or you don't like it, wait till it dries, grab that orange chalk paint and go in and essentially erase your boo-boos. Works great and I do it all the time if I mess up. And believe me y'all, it does happen. So I've got a few on the side here you can see. And then I'm gonna add some up here where these two leaves are. They're gonna be kind of winding around where the sign is. But make it your own. Uh, if you want to leave this off, you don't have to do it. But it's all the little extras that give you the unique look for your home so that you don't have anything that's cookie cutter, you know? And I know lots of y'all have told me that that's why you like watching my videos. So I want to be sure to continue to inspire the new people who come to my channel that I always strive to bring you something that is going to set your decor apart from everyone else's so we add these little things here and there and you know i made this my own because this is what i like but you are welcome to change anything to make yours exactly how you like it because we want it to bring joy into your home right i mean that's why we craft because it's fun it brings us some joy you know make it your own look at this oh it's so pretty I gotta fix that little dot right there. Here are our projects. I'm gonna let y'all take a good look in the quiet for just a moment.
At this time, I want to say thank you very much to all of the members. There are 14 members for our channel right now. I appreciate it very, very much because the money that goes to my channel from the, the donation that you make for your membership, all that goes right back into my channel. So it helps me and it helps for me to bring you the projects that you have known and come to love. A huge thank you to all of my subscribers. We've got lots of new people over here for the holiday season, and I'm excited about that. I want to remind all of you that November is Subscriber Appreciation Month on my channel. So I want you to be sure that you like my video, that you subscribe to my channel so you do not miss any of the notifications when we have giveaways. Hit the little, the little bell over there on the side. That way you get notifications when I put out new material and when I put out posts on my community post. These five projects were all done with Dollar Tree items, thrifted items, and things that I already had in my home. Talk about a bargain. You're really getting some decor that you know is going to last you through the season and on into many other seasons if you do it right it's going to stick with you until you tear it apart and make something new out of it right i love that about crafting thank y'all for being here today and for your kind comments and for your support be sure that you are checking back on the community tabs for this YouTube channel. Be sure that you're checking in. I'm trying to be more conscious about posting things. I'm trying to be more frequent about posting things. I don't want anyone to be lonely or feel like that I have forgotten about you or are taking you for granted. I am absolutely not. I count my blessings every day. I pray for y'all every day and I wish you all the light and love that I can send from my heart to yours. I hope that you have enjoyed these projects today and that you stick around because when you come back Thursday, we're going to have a bunch of all new decor to share with you. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye.